In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. You've probably noticed by now that I uh, have a tendency to uh, interject uh, humor from time to time in my sermons. I think that humor is a very uh, appropriate human emotion, and I think laughter and humor uh, can, can bring about great joy, and I think great joy is a, a wonderful tool uh, to help share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so from time to time, humor is very, import, uh, very important and very appropriate. Uh, and at the same time, I understand that there are times when uh, maybe humor is, is not so appropriate. Sometimes we, we want to be a little more solemn and a little more contemplative. And today is one of those days. Today is one of those days when we're not going to use any humor in the sermon. Uh, we're going to be uh, contemplative instead. And the reason, of course, is because today marks the uh, 21st anniversary of the attacks on the uh, World Trade Center and the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania, and I think it's important for us uh, to take some time and, and reflect and to think about how the world has changed uh, in the days and weeks and months and years following those attacks because uh, the world has changed in, in many, many ways, many, many ways, and, and many people's lives were affected, not just the people who were killed that day and not just the people who lost loved ones, uh, but also countless others uh, around the world. And so I think it's important for us uh, to take some time uh, and, and reflect on those lives that were changed. Now, when I was a little boy, I remember uh, a lesson that uh, was taught, and it was actually taught by a, a substitute teacher named Mrs. Sanders. And Mrs. Sanders told us, uh, so we were talking about history, and she was a history teacher, and she told us that uh, there was... Uh, Anyone who was alive on uh, November the 22nd, 1963, could tell you exactly where they were and exactly what they were doing when they heard the news that President John F. Kennedy had been shot. And I thought that that was, that was interesting to hear because I, I of course, had a, a, you know, a, a, a vivid memory, as many kids do, but I never had that kind of an experience where, where I could remember exactly where I was and exactly what I was doing. And so I found that interesting. And she added, the same was true for people who were, who were alive to remember uh, December 7th, 1941, when the United States Navy base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii was attacked. Uh, propelling the United States into World War II. And uh, those were events that were seared into the memories of the people who were alive to experience those kinds of events. And I never had the same kind of uh, experience until that very morning, that Tuesday morning, September the 11th, 2001. And uh, I, of course, have... have since gone on to study that that actually is a, a trauma-informed response, that our brains release a chemical reaction within our brains, and that's why we remember those things so vividly. Uh, when, when something traumatic happens in our lives, our brains release a chemical reaction, uh, and that uh, helps us to remember. We can, we can put ourselves in that place if we hear those, those kinds of events, and I can tell you exactly where I was on that Tuesday morning. I was leaving my uh, complex of my, uh, the condo where I was living, and I was on my way to class at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. And I was about to turn right onto the road, and I was listening to the, the radio, the morning program that I listen to every day on my way to class. And on the news, they said that there had been a plane that hit one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of information at the time, it was just a plane had hit the, the tower of the World Trade Center. And I, uh, in my mind, what I pictured, and, and the way the events were described, it sounded like it was probably a private plane of some kind. Somebody uh, took a Cessna and, and went somewhere they shouldn't have gone, into the city, which you shouldn't do, and got caught in an updraft or something and slammed into the tower. And I remember, uh, I remember crossing myself thinking there, there's, uh, there's not a, a likelihood that that pilot uh, survived, but also thinking uh, the pilot was probably the only one who, who was uh, injured or, or killed. And as my drive went on, it was probably a 20 or 30 minute drive to the University of Utah, uh, more and more news uh, came forth. 
and realized that, no, this was not a Cessna. These were airlines, and these were, uh, these were four different planes, and, and it, it became clear that this was some kind of a strategic attack. And this was before the days of uh, cell phones, where we could just take out our cell phone and say, what the heck is going on here? This was, this was those days when uh, the, the internet was, you know, there was high-speed internet, uh, but uh, we had to go to a, a computer lab. And so the first thing I did when I got to the university was I rushed to the computer lab to think, what is going on? And I, I logged on to every news site that I could think of, and I couldn't access any news. All of the news sites were jammed. I couldn't get any, any information. And I, I logged on to NBC, CNN, uh, CBS, every, every news site that I could think of, nothing would load. And I, what is going on? Finally, the only thing that did load was a picture of the Trade Center Tower with smoke billowing out of it. And that image uh, became seared in my mind, as I'm sure it is seared uh, in all of our minds. Uh, and, uh, and, and there's a reason. There's a reason that those events get seared in our minds, and because... Uh, they are important. Now, what comes to mind are the words of one of my uh, personal heroes. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about uh, Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers. And if you haven't heard me talk about him, you'll hear me talk about him a lot in our time together. Because Mr. Rogers uh, had a very special role in, in my life. Uh, Mr. Rogers, as you might know, uh, was an ordained Presbyterian minister. And Mr. Rogers wasn't ordained uh, to serve in the capacity of a, a parish ministry, but rather he was ordained to serve as a, a children's minister through the television. And he never, uh, he never specifically spoke about Jesus, but his message about Jesus was, was always very clear. And his words were always very comforting uh, especially to the children to whom he spoke. And, and I was one of those children. I was one of those children who was raised on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And Mr. Rogers said something uh, very memorable. Uh, when tragedy strikes, you look for the helpers. You look for the helpers. And on that day, there were a whole lot of helpers. There were a whole lot of helpers who, who left what they were doing and went down toward danger and went in, in danger's footsteps, in danger's front door, and, and tried to help. There were lots of helpers. There were firefighters. There were medical personnel. There were police officers. Uh, there's one person who, who stands out in my mind for obvious reasons. He was a chaplain, uh, Father Michael Judge, who went with his company. He was a, a chaplain with the fire department. And Father Judge went with his company to the World Trade Center Tower to be with the people. And something fell on Father Judge's head and it tragically killed him. Uh, just because of the way the paperwork worked out that day, uh, Father Michael Judge is the first official fatality uh, of the September 11th attacks. And so we remember those people who, who went out and, and were the helpers. And I know it's not intentional, but I think it's fitting that we hear the gospel reading today that we hear, where Jesus talks about uh, the, uh, that situation where uh, the 99 are, are, are okay and they're left behind, and you go after the one. You go after that one, that one sheep that needs our help. And I think the, the, the heroes, the helpers on September 11th uh, were the people who did that. They, they left their, the things that were comfortable, that were okay, and they went out to help the one uh, that, needed, uh, that needed help. And there were lots and lots of people in the days and the weeks and the months and the years after the September 11th attacks who did just that. People joined uh, various uh, lines of service, military service, uh, service as teachers, service as, as, as medical workers, Right? All kinds of service providers. People left what they were doing and, uh, and went forward uh, to be in a helping profession. And I know uh, that there are a number of you who have lived lives of service. Whatever kind of service that is, I know that uh, you have served. You have served God and you have served the people in your life. 
And I also know uh, that there are times when you are living a life of service that it doesn't always feel like you're acknowledged, that you're given the gratitude that maybe you feel like you deserve and, and in fact you do deserve. And so I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to say thank you. Thank you for being a person who serves. Thank you for being a person who, who leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Thank you for being that person because I guarantee there have been numerous times in your life when you've done that, when you've been the person who, 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 who saved someone, who went after someone and made that person feel special. And maybe that person didn't have an opportunity to thank you. Maybe that person didn't thank you, but, but you made a difference in that person's life. And so what I want us to do, I want us to take some time after this sermon is done, and, and we're almost done, I want us to take some time uh, to think inwardly and to allow ourselves to remember those times in our life when maybe, uh, maybe, we were that, maybe we were that person who went after the one, and maybe we made a difference in one person's life. Because uh, those times are there. Those times are there, and they're hard for us to think about. At least speaking for myself, those times are hard to, to think about. You know, the, the, the priesthood is certainly a, a service ministry, right? And it takes, uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice and money and time and effort to enter the priesthood. And I know that there are sometimes when I hear those negative voices, right? And sometimes one negative voice can drown out uh, hundreds of positive voices, right? But, but when I was going through... Uh, preparation to become a priest, I promised myself that if I made the difference in at least one person's life, then everything would be worthwhile. So I owe it to myself to acknowledge that. I owe it to myself to say, yes, I, I know that I have made a difference in somebody's life, and I, I owe it to myself to, to reflect on that. And you owe it to yourself as well to think about that time in your life. And, and there are probably lots of them. There are probably lots of them. But maybe there's one that stands out. Think about that time in your life when you made a difference in somebody's life and it really impacted you. And then what I want us to do is to think about the time in our lives when someone else impacted us, when we were that one sheep that maybe had gone astray and someone went out of their way to come and help us. Right? Those are the times that, are for, for me, are much easier to think about, the times when somebody saved me. Those are the times that are much easier for me to think about, right? But I guarantee that all of us have had times uh, on both sides of that coin, on both sides of that coin. And so uh, and when I finish here, uh, we're going to take a few moments. We're going to pause. And we're going to reflect. We're going to remember the people whose lives were lost, the people whose lives were changed. And all of our lives were changed that day. Things are different now than they were before. I remember being a, being a child, and I remember going to the airport to wait for Grandma to come in on an airplane, and I could go all the way to the gate, and we could wait at the gate and watch her come off the, the airplane. Those days are over. Those days are over. We can't bring, uh, we can't bring uh, liquids on our carry-on bags anymore. So, you know, those days, all, all of our lives have changed. So we're going to remember those lives that are changed and those ways that our lives are changed. The, the way that the aftermath of those events uh, have, has trickled down and affected people uh, all over the world. We're going to remember those who were the helpers that day. We're going to remember the people who we have helped. Those times in our lives when, when we were the helpers. And we're going to remember those times in our lives when others helped us. Let's take a moment and pause and reflect. Amen.